how do you feel it is like producing and printing books like that like graphic novel versus single issue do you feel like even the the print cost i know it's probably a little bit higher but is it more beneficial for you in the long scheme of things uh, i don't know i honestly like to have variety oh yeah Thank yeah you. because i just did this one um through you guys with my friend uh last summer nice. so yeah this is like standard size and then, you know, I have like the little graphic novel, but I also just love making zines. Nice. So it's all about variety and just having a little bit of like fun, like we were talking about before, because different processes take different things. So just changing it up, you know? Yeah. And keeping it exciting for you as a creator and having a diverse table. That's a big thing we talk about when we table and everything too, is like the more options you have, the more chances you are for someone to come up and be attracted to something. Um, and how is it for you tabling? Like what's your tabling experience? Like what do you find their pros and cons of going to like some of these conventions you're going to, um, and that you're, you know, either winning on some or losing on some, like, how do you feel about tabling overall as a creator? Um, I've definitely learned a lot in the past few years with that. Like I do heroes con every year. A uh, heroes con has been a consistent show for me. I think like six years now at this point. Sick. And I've tried a few other conventions. I was at SPX, um, last year and I did like Matthew's comic con this year, which is pretty close to Charlotte in North Carolina. But, um, the most successful tables I have had have been local tables oh, cool. um, and smaller shows, craft fairs as well, mm. just because it's different from comic conventions because you're having the local community come out and they really want to support local artists and small artists. Whereas like when you're at a comic book convention, the fans might be there to go see like a bigger name person. Mm -hmm. And I think Heroes Con is like a perfect in between of those two types of shows or conventions because you have people that are um, coming there for like bigger names, but at the same time, you know, people really want to support artists at that show. And they have Indie Island at that show where uh, the Heroes Con um, store um, really, like, I guess, like, promotes or puts together that part of the floor because they want to showcase, like, indie creators and people that have been coming to the show for a very long time and kind cool. of put, yeah, put it, like, in the front of other people that might just be reading superheroes and stuff like that, so... Just really what we want for more conventions as a yeah. overall, to be honest. Yeah. And that's, you know, talking to Matthew Sardo, who put together IC3 mm -hmm. Indie Creator Con, like just his vision behind it and what we're trying to plan for the next year is so exciting because, you know, now we're trying to do panels where we're talking about, you know, putting comic back in Comic Con. And it's just such a missing yeah. factor in so many conventions that we've been to. And it's weird going to some conventions where it's all just like, oh, this is just like a, like, you all are just sellers. Like you guys are just selling, you know, back issues. And then, you know, you have your craft people and then you have your cosplayers and that seems to dominate more conventions. And then the comic book conventions, I feel like, you know, Baltimore, the last time I went to it was very segmented. And I just felt like all the indie people were just shoved into the corner. And then you have all your big stars. Like, you know, if you're not cool enough to be over here, very high school, you know, very, yeah. very high school in that sense. And I hate that divide between indie and like bigger people. So, you know, finding cons like Heroes, hopefully, I think I'm going to Heroes this year. I'm not even too sure. Um, it'll be my first time checking it out. It'd be really exciting. But I want to find those conventions that highlight independent people because that's just really what we need at this point yeah and that's the awesome thing about heroes too if you'll ever hear about like the steps at heroes con it's um the, like the hotel steps outside that main hotel and everybody just hangs out there like in the lobby and um like in the front of the hotel like the whole convention and you never know who you're talking to oh cool which is the coolest thing because it's really an artist con there yeah. so like you know, um, I think, I, yeah, I met Andrew McLean oh, last right. year. Yeah. And him and I were just talking for a little bit about, you know, cool stuff. 
And then um, when I was on my way to SPX, um, I stopped at Baltimore actually because I rented a car and I went there and I just said, Hey to him. And he remembered me and it was awesome. You know, like, and that's, that's what's cool. so important about cultivating our comics community and just like hyping each other up to draw comic books because you know, at the end of the day, we're all just like super nerds, just like trying to make these awesome characters come to life. And like, we deserve to just all get together and just like nerd out all the time, you know, and it's, you know, we're just at our desk um, drawing this stuff. So conven conventions, indie conventions, having those big names and those small names come together. is just so important. Talking about process, you know, younger creators talking to older creators, it's it's so important for our community, dude. A hundred percent. It's exactly why the whole thought behind the show. When me and Dan Hills first like conceived of it over a year ago, we were just trying to find a way to bring indie people together. And you know, I'd been podcasting for a little bit, doing my own thing, but then I was like, I really want to just like hone in and focus on interviewing people and giving them a stage. Like that's the whole point is that we want to get indie people more of a spotlight, but also like share the trades of everything you know share our secrets and how we can all be successful because you know we say it many times in the show that a lot of indie creators most indie creators don't you know find other indie creators as competition we find them as like people that we're, mm -hmm. we're friends with you know if i see your work i'm going to help elevate your work you'd probably help elevate my work and we're all like a community because you know we're all different flavors and we know that our flavor might not be for the person in front of us but you know what if it's not my flavor it might be yours and that's what's exciting is that we need to get more of that work and more of that artwork out there and people who support indie work i feel like are the people who really do love the comic book medium like mm -hmm. they're going in there looking for comics of all types and not just the same two flavors that were kind of just mainly shown on you know mass media and whatnot and having all these different like inputs and styles and sharing successes and failures that's what's going to carry us all on and we're all going to learn and get better and grow more and that's the thing if i learn from your failures you learn from mine there's a lot of lessons to go through there and to like oh, okay avoid that mistake thank god they helped me out there and that's so positive because you know we just want to see each other put out our put out comics and be successful in some small manner because at the end of the day we're all just trying to like enjoy life and pay rent and like survive and like yeah like, rest ourselves overall you know doing what we love and I, I will say like to that too like um i think it was like two or three years ago um rich tomaso needed a ride back to atlanta um i don't know if you know him that but... sounds really familiar i was trying to like think of that on top of my head so he has been published by Fantagraphic since the 90s. He's an incredible artist. Um, he actually lives right down the street from me. Oh, right. But yeah, he needed a ride back um, to Atlanta. So we talked the entire time, four or five hours, and um, finally just figured out, you know, we need to do a drink and draw. Uh, so we've been doing a drink and draw here for like two or three years now, pretty consistently with a pretty big, uh, group of cartoonists. Oh, cool. And that has really helped my production. I'm sure everyone else's as well as just like my motivation to keep going because we all will bring like our sketchbook and a stack of comics of what we're reading. Nice. And so we'll sit there for a few hours and just kind of like flip through, you know, all this, all these new books that are old books that we've never even heard of. And, oh, what do you think of my new project? You know, what do you think of this style? You know, all of that. And it has That's really cool. helped me. And I think we're really helping each other. Um, we, sit each, we sit at each other's tables. We do local events. You know, we all ride together to events sometimes. Like, and that's really all about building the community. That community. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm a, I love being a part of my community in Atlanta as well. I live in Little Five Points. It's a pretty close-knit neighborhood in Atlanta. So everyone here supports my work, and it, it feels really good to not only be a part of the comic community in Atlanta, but to be a part of the community of Atlanta, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's huge for an artist. Yeah, it really is. I mean, finding okay. community on, online is one essence, but like an actual like in-person community and like your local community supporting you on top of that, 
dude, that's dreams at that point for, uh, especially for an indie creator. It gets so hard for me now at this point, when I go to events, I will sell out of my book at local events. That's why I don't have an online shop. Oh, that makes sense. Because it takes so much time for me to get reprints and there's another event or I'll go out and I'll see some friends and one of my other friends will come out from like the side and be like, Hey, I just saw your Instagram post. Like, can I get one of those books? Do you have it right now? And I, you know, I do carry my zines around sometimes or I'll yep. meet up with someone at the bar and I'll sell them some comic books or, you know, sell them some stickers and just keep running out of stuff, which is good. But like, that's kind of going back to like part-time jobs and stuff like that. Um, I just started a part-time job because I work. I probably worked like three jobs last year at one point at the same time. I've and been <laughs> yeah, I've been <laughs> yeah. just trying to like figure out what's working best for me. So right now I just have a part-time job so that I can dedicate more time to doing an online shop and taking on more freelance opportunities so that I can continue to like make comic books and do art. I mean, mm -hmm. the main goal is to do art full time, but it, it, is it, a takes, grind. it takes so much time to get there because art in general takes so long to get good at. Mm -hmm. Bring your comics with